Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a really, really fun one. Um, I'm joined by, first of all, Master Club Fitter Tyler Fitzel here and Mr. Paul Lambert. Uh, Minnesota sports fans may know him better as Meat Sauce on the K-Fan Sports Radio Network. Um, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Oh, this thanks is for be, having me. Uh, thanks this for is having gonna be a lot me. of fun. So yeah. um, for those who don't know, maybe kind of introduce yourself um, to the viewers, and then also maybe a little bit about your golf game. Sure. Uh, I'm Paul Meatsauce Lambert. I'm on the uh, Power Trip Morning Show, which you can hear 5.30 to 9 on KFAN. Uh, golf is the only hobby I have. You can ask my wife that. <laughs> uh, I love golf because it gets you in front of people I would normally wouldn't hang out with me. Like some of the guys I golf with, if I was like, hey, do you guys want to come play Madden in my basement? They'd be like, no. But if I was like, do you guys want to go play golf? They'd be like, absolutely. Golf is the best. I love golf. It's the only hobby I have. I absolutely love playing golf. And I'm excited to be here because this is the best place to get fitted for the best clubs. Nothing better than second swing. Love that. So what? So today you talked, we talked a little about off camera. You have some things set in your bag already, but there yeah. are also some things you're looking for. So what we're trying to add in today? I'm looking for uh, some new irons and I'm looking for a uh, driver, three wood. Do you still call them wood? Sure. Yeah. They're not wood, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, those, see, that just shows how much I know about the game. But yeah, I'm looking for all that because uh, I think golf season in the state of Minnesota is right around the corner. Especially, I think it's going to be like in the 50s next week. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Well, Tyler, now you know a little bit about his game now. Mm -hmm. um, we got some warm up swings in and stuff. So, uh, what do you, how's your approach to this fitting now that you've got some background information? Well, there's, there's three things that we want to do, right? We always take a look at, at the club you've got, the swing you make, and the ball you hit. So we're going to take a look at um, what's going on with your swing, and we're going to try to maximize what's happening with that golf ball. Sweet. And that, that's really what it comes down to. So when we hit that ball, what happens, right? And uh, the, the biggest thing with any club for that matter is most manufacturers are elite. They are all making great equipment. we got to sort through and find a combination that looks good to you, feels good, and performs well. And I'm pretty confident we can do that. I love it. You ready to go? Absolutely. Right, you I guys can get wait. after it here. Let's, yeah, Rock. let's go. Well, let's talk about a couple of things. And I mentioned earlier, uh, one, we were talking about the idea of, of what, is, what is a fitting to begin with. We're looking at the club, the swing, and the ball. Um, for the swing part of it, I don't get too much into that. That's not necessarily my main focus. But it is important to kind of know what's going on because from that perspective, it helps me, it helps me understand what's going on with the ball. Yeah, And so it's, it's the ball that we really want to kind of focus on. But um, from a swing perspective, if you take a look that we have uh, on any one of these shots as an example, the, the club path right here, this is an average of the club path comes across the ball okay. or the zero line for that. The zero doesn't mean perfect and it doesn't mean straight. It just means that you're delivering the club um, at, at an angle that's moving a little bit left when you get to the ball. And the other thing about this is that this is the moment of impact. It's not what you did to get there. It's not what you did after. So leading into the ball and the follow through are very important pieces of the puzzle, but I don't have a picture of that. I have what's happening at impact. And so the one thing that happens for every single golfer, regardless uh, of the skill level, um, the face angle at the moment of impact, that is the one thing that will change every swing for every golfer. And as you see, even the best players in the world go a little bit right and left. What we're looking at is not trying to change that, is necessarily we're trying to fix that. That's a management thing. Yeah. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take what's going on and, and make, uh, make what you're doing as consistent as possible. Okay. Um, there's, there's four things that we look at with the golf ball. The first is ball speed. So how fast does the ball travel? The next is the launch angle. And the third is the uh, uh, spin. Um, in those regards, for the numbers, we want to have speed, launch, and spin. That's how the ball gets in the air. Then how it comes down is kind of the fourth piece of that, which is its direction as well. Okay. So um, one of the things is like p playing at, at your, your home golf course, the carry, the carry distance is a very important number for us. Like getting over that bunker, getting over that water, or getting to a, a whole location that's in the front of the green versus on a slope. We want to be able to get that ball to get up and then also get down. So those are some of the things we'll look at with the golf ball. Sweet. Let's start with um, uh, a measurement on this. I like to say for the club itself, 
length and strength. Yeah. So how, how you fit measurement wise, but also then how you move the club gets us into a, a, a good position. Um, how tall are you? Uh, six one. Okay. And so real quick, I'll just take this and you just stand with your arms hanging at your side, nice and comfortable. Thank you. So we would fit into some, we would fit into a club that's probably about a half inch over standard length and maybe something that's maybe about one or two degrees upright. That's something that we'll be able to play around with as we're doing our testing as well is to hone in on that part of it. Um, generally speaking, if you're, stand, if you're standing on the par three at, at your club, it's nice, even, flat. Uh, and I said, it's 152 yards to carry to the green. Yeah. What club would you pull? Probably my six iron. Excellent. Yeah. That helps get us an idea about what we're going to look at in terms of, uh, speed as well. Now you, you do swing the club around 70 miles an hour with this seven iron that you're warming up with. So what we want to do is have something that is, uh, appropriate for that club speed, but it's also how you move the club. It's not just, Hey, you're swinging this fast. It's like if you, if you pull on the handle hard, that changes the way that something flexes versus if you move the club outward and back down. Okay. So let's get started with a couple of companies. Uh, we talked about this a little earlier. You're interested in maybe trying something like a Titleist? Yeah. Uh, uh, Callaway? Sure. Um, probably a Ping maybe we yeah. throw in there. And maybe even a wild card. Um, I'll throw something on that side of it. Okay, perfect. So let me go grab a club and let's get to it. Sweet. So what we've got here is the AI Smoke by Callaway. Uh, it's their, their newest offering. And one of the things that they've done is kind of um, redefined what they had in last year's uh, Paradigm Iron. They have uh, microspheres inside a hollow cavity that, that do allow for a little bit softer feel to this. Um, we've decided, to, uh, based on length and the, uh, the idea of kind of length and strength, we're gonna go with uh, plus half in terms of um, over standard, uh, which is about 37 and a half inches. We're also gonna go with two degrees upright based on the lie angle um, from the wrist to four measurement that we have. Uh, the shaft that we've got in here is a uh, true temper elevate MPH. Um, I, I hate it when <laughs> I, I, I get this idea of stock and I say stock option. Um, this is the stock shaft. It's one of the ones that's, that's created or built with this club in general. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's just that that's the way that Callaway's balanced this. Um, it's a lightweight and a stiff that allows us to kind of move through um, and hit, uh, <coughs> get some lift on that golf ball. So what are your first impressions? I love this club. This is great. Yeah, let's take a look at this um, real quick for the, the things we mentioned uh, just a second ago. Uh, you can see that in, in terms of where we, uh, where we are, we're looking at, okay, where's the seven iron over here? Oh, there. Um, as we take a look at this club, one of the things we go back to is, all right, ball speed. 95 miles an hour of ball speed. You've got some 96s, 97s, 98s. For, that's really good. For this, we want to see the ball coming off around 100 miles an hour for the type of club speed that we're seeing with this. Number two, launch. We've got 20 degrees of launch. That's excellent. That's getting that ball up in the air, which also provides some of the, the height to it. And if it gets higher to that, it can also land steeper, which is where we can go over things um, and also have some stopping power to it. You see that our average carry distance is about 130, but you've got 134, 31, 31, 133. You see really good uh, carry distances of that, as well as even um, total distances, 151, 142, 145, 46. So now we've got something that is going to be up in the air and is carrying to it. Um, so far, that's a really, really nice uh, fit. Uh, let's try something different to that. Okay. Let's, let's go to ping. All right. So what we've got here is the Ping I-525. It's considered what's called a player's distance iron so that it has a little bit of a slimmer look to it, uh, but it also has a hollowed out feature which allows us to maybe get some ball speed to this as well. Um, it's been um, really nice because it has consistency in terms of its spin and its launch, 
um, and added a little bit of ball speed that may get us some of that distance that we're looking for in terms of um, um, peak height. Nice. Oh, Jesus. Excellent. Now, the reason I say excellent to that, we look at a club and go, all right, it's the same length, it's the same lie angle, it's the same weighted in terms of the shaft. That club isn't a great combination. So, you know, we put the Callaway in your hand and it felt good, maybe it was yeah. balanced. That just helps prove something like that club isn't the right club in the moment. Let's try something else, like the Titleist. Off to a nice start. All right, well, let's take a quick peek at the numbers again. And one of the things that we see, maybe not quite as much as the ball speed. Yeah. Um, you, we can also see from the, um, I'm gonna take a couple of the ping, the ping ones off of here for the moment. You can also see even where we started is, as an average, we're looking at that Callaway having um, one of our best carry distances and our best total distances. So that's, that's one of the things um, I really like out of the gate. The consistency like the, uh, that the AI Smoke, the newest offering from Callaway had, versus uh, even the Ping and or a Titleist. Um, the, I like to call this first st side of this more about the flavor testing. Yeah. So it's like for you to have something that's the same length, about the same weight from different companies, giving you an opportunity to just see, like, does this look good? Does it even feel good? because the performance aspect is kind of the, another uh, piece to that that we're looking at. Um, let's try the wild card out of this and let me go grab something unique and see if that clicks for you too. Sweet. Let's hit this and see what we get. What I put in your hand here is the uh, Cerixon ZX5. They call it the Mark II. And it's a forged, it's a forged body with a um, ultra hardened steel face that allows for some pop on the ball. We're still doing the same thing in terms of our setup. We're staying consistent with lightweight stiff. We're doing a plus half inch and two degrees up based on our measurements. So from a club perspective, this is more about the, how the club head looks and feels. Okay. What were your first impressions of that? Uh, it's fine. Okay. I think it's like all of them. They're very like lightweight that I like. Yeah. I think from our our from a numerical perspective, the the Callaway is where I start leaning towards after yeah. um, you know several of these models. Very very similar in what their design features are for. Right, every company has their own way of describing and marketing the technology that's in it. But essentially, this is a thin face that allows for ball speed. That's the forgiveness factor. Um, but, but secondary to that is all, all of the companies now are even individualizing the irons to perform peak for that iron, right? So the weighting is different from iron to iron so that you get more or less trajectory depending on what you're swinging. Um, you get more ball speed or less ball speed depending on where you hit that. The forgiveness aspect is distance, because if you're moving east and west, then it's just a, a face angle issue. If it's moving north and south, then we have something that we have to look at in terms of, is that the right fit? Too heavy, too light? Sure. Um, the big thing I wanna do is I wanna balance what's happening too. If I give you something too heavy, right? Two things are undefeated in golf, mother nature and gravity. So we're really fighting kind of both of those. As soon as the ball is struck, the environment takes over, whether it's hot or cold, windy, up, down. 
But gravity is also a piece of this puzzle too, because what we do when we swing is we're fighting gravity. We're picking a club up, we're moving it, and then gravity uh, plays a huge role in that. So that's where I want to, I don't want something too heavy, but I also don't want it light. If it is too light, we have to swing it harder to make it go faster. And generally that's an off speed um, yeah. balance issue. Yeah. yeah. What I look back at is I'm looking back at the, the Callaway here. Yeah, that's and the best one. Yeah. Yeah. I really like where that was at. Yeah. Um, one of the things I want to do with that is, is try some different shafts to that. Okay. Right. The shaft, a lot of people consider the shaft to be an engine of a club. And the reality is like the engine in a car helps to move the car. Well, the engine in a golf swing is the person. It's the body. It's not the shaft. The shaft is just kind of an intermediate. And what, what really the technology goes on in towards the head, because that's what makes contact with the ball. But if we change up the way that something is in between, does it flex differently? Is it lighter versus heavier? That can change the way you swing. It could also change the performance we get out of the ball too. Yeah, so that makes a ton of sense, yeah. I like where the AI smoke is at. Let's try a couple of different um, shafts with that. All right, back to the Callaway AI smoke. Let's go ahead and hit this about four or five times and... Jeez. That's the best ball speed we've had. Yeah. That's crushed. For yeah, me. It, it was actually, yes. Ball speed, that's the highest we've seen. Yeah. Farthest carry distance, great total distance. Look at us. Yeah, again. Look at us go. Yep. Well, I'm not going to take any responsibility, no, right? It's all I, you. It's no, all you. I can put something in your hand. You still have to swing it. And this is where the, the fun part comes. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. So in this shaft, I went a little bit lighter. I wanted to get something that, um, that maybe gave us a little bit more kick to it. It's funny because in a couple of different ways, as we look at the data up there, your ball speed has been the highest at, at 100, 99, and 98. So yep. now we have a, a 99.2 average. Uh, we have the launch angle uh, around 19 and a half, which is excellent. That's, that's nice and high. A spin rate that's up into the 4,000s, which is a lot better than if it were into the 2,000s, 3,000s. Uh, we carried the ball on average to, uh, 138 and went 151. And so one of the nice pieces is if we look back at original, um, the original uh, AI smoke where we had a stiff shaft in it, yeah. uh, it was 95 miles an hour of ball speed launch was about the same, spin was about the same, carry is up dramatically. Yeah. As it's eight yards on the one side, as well as on the other side being at 151 as a total. So this is where we get into that idea. Remember again, it's how does the ball hit the, the club face? That's what the technology meets uh, in the club head to give us the ball speed, the launch and the spin. But we've also got a shaft here that maybe changes the, the swing dynamic your club speeds up maybe one to one and a half mile an hour. So in this case, lighter can be better to that. Something I wanna try though next is I wanna try graphite. I wanna see whether or not graphite does anything different to this as well. It, I, a lot of the times I talk about a shaft as a feedback mechanism. It really gives us feedback so it can feel something. But graphite is built differently where we can put kind of more of a bend in a certain part of the shaft rather than a steel tube is just a steel tube, right? And I think also, if I get the added benefit, does that increase club speed, ball speed, launch and spin? Let's find out if we, what happens with graphite. The average yardage in that one yes. is literally 25 more yards than these two. Correct. I mean, that, that you can't, even if, even if you love the brand, how could, you can't, how could you go against that? Why would you want to play worse golf but have a night nice, like a yeah. brand? Uh, uh, yeah. No, that you're you're right. And we're gonna try graphite. Sure. Not sure what's gonna happen with this, right? This is the reason we test it. Um, is a club gonna move faster, slower? Uh, is, is the ball speed gonna get higher? Um, what happens to launch and spin? What are your first impressions? Uh, it feels heavier. Is that wrong? 
No, if you think about it from a perspective of the weighting, right? The mass of the head didn't change. I didn't change yeah. the head. That's yeah. always the same. But if I put a lighter shaft in between, it makes the head feel heavier. Okay. If I put a, a much heavier shaft in between, the old, whole club might feel heavier, yeah. but the head might feel lighter. Yeah, and even for that, I'm, I, I still, I think we already have a better combination. I'm going to hold you on that. But, you know, talking about like the brands in, in themselves, yeah. right? It's not a brand that's going to make something happen. It's a combination, right? And so from a fitter's perspective, I'm looking at the right balance. We talked about that length versus strength. So in the shaft combination, if I get something light enough, but not too light, this is a lot lighter and the club speed actually went down. The ball speed actually went down. And in, in a balanced sense, you had to actually swing this faster to get it to go somewhere. So now all of a sudden, you're not ultimately balanced through the hitting zone. Um, I look at the, the brands and I say, listen, um, unless someone's going to pay you to play these, yeah. that hasn't happened for me yet. Yeah. But you, you go with a brand um, that, that performs well, yeah. right? A look, a feel, and a performance. Callaway, as we're talking about this AI smoke, has been around for a very long time, and their irons have been some of the best in the business for a very long time. It's not to say we, we tried like a Titleist, we tried yeah. like a Ping, we tried um, a Cerixin. We've got other uh, clubs that we put in the mix, and they're all very identical to this. But uh, we can't sacrifice the results just because maybe we think, oh, hey, Titleist is the one today or, or Ping. Um, I'd say that I fit every one of the clubs that we've tried uh, multiple times during the course of a week, and they work for one person and maybe not so well on another person. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's one day when everyone's just hitting the Callaway and the Callaway jumps off, and that becomes a you know a hot club for the day. But it's really just uh, an, an individual basis. Well, and I think when from anybody's standpoint, like let's say you came in here and you're like, I gotta play a Cobra club. That's the club that I hit. And then they go through this process with you. Yeah. And you look at it, you go, well, I hit the Cobra 150, but I hit the Callaway 175. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can sacrifice brand recognition or brand loyalty right. for distance. Because you can look great, but if you, if why would you give up 25 yards? That's And I'm mostly speaking for myself. Cause yeah. 15 years ago, I would have gone, well, I don't care what you guys say. I'm playing that Titleist. Well, then you look at it, you're going, we're hitting it 25 yards shorter. Why would you play that club? I think going through this process makes the whole difference. You can go into a, some other store and go, oh, cool, I hit four of them. But yeah. I want this club. Right. All right, well, then we'll sell you this club. But when you go through this process and you see the numbers laid out, you got to, I mean, it just, it's simple. You got to go with the one you hit the best, regardless of what brand it is. Well, and I think part of us at Second Swing is we're brand agnostic, as you Correct. say, yeah. right? So um, the beauty of the process is to just really find what's better for your game. Yeah. And, you know, there's other things. Uh, it's not just a distance game, but you also you had ball speed. You had good launch. You had good spin. You had good direction. It's like all of the factors that we're looking at were that, that Callaway was the leader in the clubhouse. Did it exactly the same or better when I put a different shaft in it as well. Yeah. So I come back to this, what's really driving the technology? It's the head. We can fine tune it with uh, um, the shaft on top of that. But for me, I really, really like where that Callaway is in that space. Yes, yeah, same. Um, and I think the, uh, the, the steel shaft, but in a regular flex for the moment, is getting us the kick. You're, you're swinging it faster, which means more ball speed. You're getting more distance out of it, and, and we still have direction with it. Yeah, I really, really like uh, what that AI smoke is doing for you. Yeah, same. It's great. Let's I think put the other shaft back in real quick. Sweet. Hit a couple more. Nice. So we're back to the combination I think is going to work the best here. It's a, uh, a lightweight steel shaft, regular flex, and uh, the AI uh, smoke head. <clears throat> yeah, really nice. Yeah, this is this. Yeah. 
Now, do you want a, a sliver of uh, help with your golf game? Of course. So take two weeks off and quit. Yeah, take up pickleball. No, yeah, that's um, Commons line. Yeah, a lot of it is uh, a lot of it is kind of a little bit of footwork for you right yeah. now. So you're not really getting the load on your right side. Sure. So just go ahead and get set up to this golf ball. Get ready to go. Now slightly pinch your knees together, and try to hold them slightly pinched together while you're swinging and see what happens. Now you notice that there's when you're turning, there's a lot more power actually there. Yeah. And that's because for, for a little while here, your, your swing is kind of rolling out on your right, your right side. Yeah. So you're kind of leaning on the, you know, the entire weight and sweet speed of your swing is, is kind of dependent on your right ankle instead of your, your right um, thigh. Mm -hmm. Let's try a couple more with that. So as an average, your club speed's up now about another one to one and a half miles an hour. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to put it this way. There's two connections in the game of golf. You've got a, your hands on the club and your feet on the ground. And the only connection that stays basically uh, as a fixed point through it is the grip, right? But your feet, your body, everything else is in motion. Even the club's in motion, right? So if we take a look at the footwork, a lot of what happens in the golf swing is just about balance. And so balance is a tricky one. Um, you don't have to be athletic to play the game of golf. But what you have to do is you have to be able to balance your body for the swing speed and the motions you're making. Um, we get wrapped up into trying to swing harder. And what happens as we move faster is that we actually just get off balance to it. Yeah. And so kind of setting up a little bit more on that right side would help. Um, and, you know, it's like going to the doctor and you, you get a prescription. He says, okay, you need to take, you know, one a day. Well, you don't take five the first day and then just skip the next four days. Uh, you have to be, you know, balance the, what you feel with what you're doing in, in a little bit of the practice routine to that too. See how much easier it is to turn that way too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's just hip restriction. So when you move your feet apart, your, your leg muscles are actually doing more support yeah. than they are um, turning. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, makes a ton of sense. You can, so, I can feel it too. Yeah, I wouldn't go out to the golf course and, and you know play with your knees pinched together necessarily. Um, Oh, I and I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't play with my feet together, but really what it does is it just shows you kind of where your balance is. Yeah. When you have your feet closer together like that, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to over swing or you'll fall over. Yeah. You won't bob up and down. You won't sway as much. So moving forward, um, it's a practice tool. Yeah. And if you can, at the very least, if you kind of get that right foot a little bit more set, you'll have something to turn around on. Yeah. Rather than kind of over here to over here. Sure. Yeah. Slide okay. a little bit. Um, so <coughs> with this iron set, I like where we're at for its length and strength. Yeah. I'd like to go five down through its gap wedge. Perfect. And the reason for that is that this does have a little bit of a lower mm -hmm. loft. So essentially, as clubs are kind of being technically built today, a five is really just kind of a little bit more of a four yeah. and so on down the line. So the numbers on the bottom are performing maybe slightly different than they were before. But from a loft perspective, a length perspective, you know, we're going to be a little bit longer. You should have a little bit more trajectory, more ball speed. Um, but that puts us um, coming into the gap wedge down into your wedges, which is a good gapping between yeah. them. And then on the other side, um, we're going to take a look at, at um, some woods that would fit on the other side of this iron set. So we go five down through gap wedge, plus half inch. We're going to go two degrees upright in the lie angle. And we're going to go with this Elevate MPH regular flex that Callaway has for this AI smoke. Sweet. 